Hello, and welcome to the 2020 Annual Vendor Training. Federal regulations in your vendor agreement require that all WIC authorized vendors participate in annual training. Due to COVID-19, this year's presentation has been recorded for you to watch at your convenience. Once you have viewed and listened to the entire presentation, you are required to complete and submit a quiz and evaluation to verify that you have completed your annual training requirement. Today's agenda includes the coronavirus, what is WIC, what it means to be a WIC vendor, processing a WIC transaction, the WIC agreement, the approved product list and required minimum stock, what to expect on a store visit, and the instructions on the final steps to complete this training. As we slowly move towards recovery and our new normal, whatever that might be, the Maryland WIC program wants to extend a big thank you to all our hardworking vendors that have been on the front lines working to ensure groceries are available for all customers. Thank you for all your hard work, you rock. WIC stands for Women, Infants and Children and is a nutrition program that provides healthy foods nutrition education, breastfeeding support, and referrals to healthcare and other services free of charge to Maryland families that qualify. More than half of the infants in the United States participate in WIC. Maryland WIC serves approximately 125,000 participants each month. To be eligible for WIC, a participant must live in Maryland, meet the income guidelines, and have a nutritional need. Eligible women include pregnant women, women that have recently had a baby or a breastfeeding mom up to the baby's first birthday. Infants and children up to their fifth, fifth birthday are also eligible. Maryland WIC provides food benefits to families in one family eWIC account which is accessed by an eWIC debit card. Participants may shop in any WIC authorized store in Maryland and do not have to buy all their foods in one shopping trip. They can use their benefits as needed throughout the month. The Maryland WIC program considers our vendors to be our partners because without them, our participants would not be able to obtain the nutritious foods we prescribe to them. Maryland currently has approximately 600 authorized WIC vendors. Studies show that WIC shoppers will spend an additional three to four dollars at the store for every WIC dollar spent. In 2019, Maryland WIC food sales totaled more than $86 million. Again, we thank our vendor partners. We couldn't do it without you. Let's review some of the rules and regulations related to the WIC transaction. When a customer swipes their card and enters their PIN, the system obtains the benefit balance. The point of sale device, which you'll hear me refer to as the POS, determines if benefits are available for the specific universal product codes, the UPCs, or price lookup codes, the PLUs, of the items that were scanned. Cashiers should scan every item the WIC customer brings to the checkout. The system will determine the items that are WIC approved. If an item scans as WIC approved, you must allow the purchase. Items not approved by WIC may be purchased with a different tender or voided from the transaction. It is recommended to void by line item and not the entire transaction. If you must void the entire transaction, you must run a balance inquiry afterwards to ensure that benefits were not debited from the participant's balance. Unlike SNAP benefits, once a WIC's transaction is completed, benefits cannot be returned to a card. I'd like to remind you about a few things when handling a WIC transaction. If the eWIC card won't scan, you can manually key in the number, but only if the card is present. 
Only scan the UPC or the PLU affixed to the item being purchased. Use the redemption review receipt and the authorized foods list to help your customer figure out why a food item was not included in the WIC portion of the transaction. Give all receipts that print out to the customer. Although it doesn't happen very often, you should know that an eWIC transaction may not have 50 or more WIC items in a single transaction unless the quantity key is used. WIC customers are entitled to all the same perks as any customer. Always allow and encourage the use of store loyalty cards, sales, coupons, and BOGOs. BOGOs don't work the same in all stores. In some stores, the first item rings up at full price and the second item at zero. In these stores, the participant's benefit balance would have one item debited from their balance. In other stores, the BOGO rings up at half price. In this case, the participant's balance will be debited for two items. It's important to explain this to the participant. If a WIC customer uses coupons, the total of the coupons comes off the order. Cash is never given to the participant. Some of the common reasons an item doesn't scan as WIC approved are, it's not a WIC approved item, it needs to be added to the APL, the item isn't in the participant's benefit balance, or they don't have enough avail available for the purchase or they were never assigned the benefit. If you encounter any problems processing an eWIC transaction, notify your supervisor and contact your store's help desk. If your help desk cannot solve the problem, contact Solutran as soon as possible by emailing ebtservices at solutran.com or by calling 866-730 7746. Please have as much information as possible when calling, such as the time and date of the event, the card number, and details about the transaction. We're going to take a few minutes to review some of the rules and regulations. Since most of our authorized vendors are corporate stores, you may not realize that your corporate office has signed a vendor agreement with the Maryland WIC program on behalf of your store. We're going to take a few minutes and review some of the requirements of this agreement. Every store is required to have a designated WIC trainer that is responsible for ensuring all cashiers, including customer service staff, are trained in the proper way to handle a WIC transaction. Every store must have minimum required stock on hand at all hours the store is open. We know this has been a challenge during the pandemic, but we expect stocking levels to return to normal as soon as possible once the state of emergency has ended. Stores are only allowed to purchase infant formula and medical foods from a manufacturer, distributor, or wholesaler listed on the Authorized Infant Formula and Medical Food Supplier Directory. The current directory can be found in the Vendor Resource Library on our website. You must always offer the same courtesies to WIC customers as you would to any customer. A happy customer is likely to return to your store, and that means more dollars spent in your store. Sometimes participants don't know what benefits they have available to spend and will request that you run a balance inquiry. Please do so when requested. Give all printed receipts to the participant. Be sure that your store has the most recent APL downloaded to the POS. Only scan the UPC or the PLU that is affixed to the item being purchased. Scan books are prohibited. You must always have the eWIC accepted here sign posted in a conspicuous place in the front of the store. This sign lets customers know that they can spend their WIC benefits at your store. Many stores post the sign in their front window or door. 
I also suggest posting one at your customer service desk. That way, if someone forgets to put the signs back up after the windows get washed, you're still in compliance. Many corporate stores have an all-in-one all sign posted that shows all the services a store offers. This sign is not a substitute for the eWIC accepted here sign. Stores must have a valid email address that is checked on a regular basis, but no less than once a week to receive information and updates. If your store experiences any problems with a WIC participant, it needs to be reported to us so we can resolve the issue. A problem may simply be a language barrier or lack of understanding of the authorized foods list. The vendor complaint form can be found in the vendor resource library on our website. Vendors are required to keep all WIC-related accounting records and invoices for a period of three years and to provide them when requested. Stores are required to have their prices posted for all WIC authorized foods. The prices must be posted at, on, or near each authorized food. How you post the prices is your choice. Some stores price each food item, Others use shelf tags, and some post a list of prices. If you choose to use a price list, it cannot have the WIC acronym or logo printed on it. There are some things that a store is never allowed to do. This includes asking a participant for identification or for their PIN. If they have their eWIC card and know the PIN, that's all that's necessary. Stores may not allow the purchase of unauthorized foods or allow substitutions, and stores are not allowed to provide incentive items solely to WIC customers or to use the WIC acronym or logo without written permission from the program. Vendors must never allow refunds or exchanges of WIC foods. If a food is spoiled, an exact chain exchange of the item is allowed. If your store has problems with participants attempting a refund or exchange, we can provide you with a sign to post that states refunds and exchanges are not allowed. WIC approved stickers are not allowed to be placed on food items. Keep an eye on your bread. Sometimes the salesman or delivery person puts stickers on breads. Vendors may never make up their own signs or banners promoting WIC or to show they accept WIC. We're going to spend some time reviewing the approved product list. The approved product list, commonly referred to as the APL, is the database of more than 16,000 UPCs and PLUs. An additional 1,200 UPCs have been temporarily added to help with food access during the COVID-19 pandemic. The APL database is maintained by the WIC office and is downloaded nightly to the POS systems in the stores. Stores with stand beside machines must leave the machines and the internet turned on at night so the APL will download. In integrated stores, the IT department or your POS service provider ensures that the APL is downloaded every night. If your store is experiencing a lot of rejected items, you may not have the most recent APL downloaded. The APL will always be a work in progress because manufacturers add and remove UPCs daily. Participants and vendors submit UPCs daily for review. Stores receive fruits and vegetables from new suppliers all the time, and the UPC on them may not be in the APL. The UPC should be submitted to the state WIC office for review. If you or your customer thinks an item should be WIC approved, but it doesn't scan as WIC approved, you can submit the UPC to the state WIC office for consideration. Items submitted for review must go through an approval process prior to being added to the APL. If the item meets the nutrition requirements to be WIC approved, it is added to the APL. 
newly approved UPCs or PLUs may take up to 72 hours to be downloaded to the store's POS. Most chain stores submit UPCs through their corporate office. Check with your supervisor on how to submit a UPC. The easiest way to submit a UPC is online or through the APL checker for vendors. To submit a UPC for consideration, go to mdwic.org and select vendors. Then click on the vendor resource library. Scroll down to the section titled Submitting Products to the WIC Approved Products List, APL, then click on Submit Online. The window pictured will pop up and you can sign in or create an account with your email address and password. Then you can upload the UPC. The nutritionist will review the item and add it to the APL if it meets the guidelines for WIC approval. The Maryland WIC program developed the APL ch checker for for, as a tool for vendors to see if a food is WIC approved. You can download the APL checker from the Google Play or Apple Store. Once downloaded on a smartphone, just point and scan. The, if the item is approved, it will bring back a WIC approved message. If the item status comes back as not in our APL, it can be submitted by clicking the word here. The term mapping or mapped is used for fresh produce. Occasionally, produce items can cause a problem at checkout. Many UPCs in the produce department must be mapped to a generic PLU. UPCs that start with a 2, 4, or 9 are store-generated UPCs. These are not unique UPC numbers. A store-generated UPC might be for cut watermelon in one store, but used for a discounted cookie sheet in another store. Since store-generated UPCs are not unique, and must be mapped within your POS system so that they will scan as WIC approved at the checkout. If you're unsure how to map a UPC, reach out to your store's IT team. We'll now review minimum stock. As previously mentioned, all stores are required to have the minimum required stock on hand and available for sale at all times the store is open. Your ordering thresholds and additional quantities of WIC approved foods should be based on your WIC business. If you are a high volume WIC store, you will need to stock more than the minimum stock to ensure compliance. A copy of the current requirements can be found in the vendor resource library at mdwic.org. WIC is required by regulation to have a rebate contract formula with a formula manufacturer for a milk-based and soy-based infant formula. The rebate contract allows us to provide services to more participants. The current contract formulas are Similac Advanced Powder and Similac Soy Isomel Powder. These are the formulas that WIC provides and prescribes most frequently. You are always required to have a minimum of 27 cans of Similac Advanced Powder and four cans of Similac Soy Isomel Powder in stock when your store is open. You are not required to carry any other formula. Sometimes WIC prescribes other formulas or medical foods. If your store is authorized as a pharmacy only or a food pharmacy combination store, you are required to supply any formula or medical food requested within 48 hours, excluding weekends and holidays. Target stores are authorized as food only stores, so they are exempt from this requirement. 
Now we're going to review what you can expect when a WIC representative visits your store. A store visit is the perfect time to discuss any issues or problems your store is experiencing with transactions or participants. USDA and state regulations require that local WIC agency staff and state staff routinely monitor stores. Monitoring visits are unannounced. During a visit, the WIC representative may observe the following. Is the eWIC accepted here sign posted in a conspicuous place in the front of the store? Is a valid food service facility license on display? If a combination food pharmacy, does the pharmacy have a current license? If the store has a stand beside machine, is the eWIC accepted here sign posted at the checkout lanes where the stand, be shop, stand beside machine operates? How many checkout lanes does the store have? How many self-checkout lanes? Is the store clean and sanitary? Are there outdated foods on the shelves? Are WIC prices posted on or near all WIC authorized foods? Are shelf tags only on WIC approved foods? Are WIC approved stickers placed on foods? Does each checkout have a copy of the authorized foods list? Sometimes during a visit, the WIC representative may document violations. If this happens, the store will receive a warning letter detailing the violations that were observed. A follow-up visit will be conducted in approximately two to three weeks. This gives the store time to correct the violations. If any of the violations from the first visit are documented again on the second visit, another warning letter will be issued. A third visit will be conducted in about two to three weeks, again, allowing the store time to correct the violations. If on the third visit, the same violation or violations are documented, the store faces disqualification from the WIC program for one year. An educational buy is an undercover WIC purchase that is used as a tool to be sure store staff have been properly trained on WIC procedures. A WIC rep representative will make a purchase and once the transaction is completed, will identify his or herself and ask to speak with store management to discuss the results of the buy. If a problem is discovered, it will likely, it will be documented on the vendor educational buy report. A follow-up buy is likely to ensure that all training issues have been resolved. No violations or sanctions will result from an educational buy. Frequently, the results of an educational buy indicate the need for cashier training. Cashier training is available throughout the year at locations across the state. The schedule is available on the vendor page at mdwic.org. Pre-registration is required. Due to COVID-19, many of the in-person trainings have been canceled. If you have pre-registered for a class, please reach out to Terry Buckler to confirm if the class is still being held or if it's been canceled. We recognize that it's difficult to free up cashiers to attend training classes at another location, so we offer cashier training in your store. To arrange for in-store training, contact Terry Buckler at terry.buckler at maryland.gov. An on-site visit is an unannounced visit that is performed when a store has applied to become a WIC vendor or for the reauthorization of a current vendor. During an on-site visit, the WIC representative will check to be sure that the store has the required minimum stock and may observe the same things that are observed during a monitoring visit. UPCs and prices will be collected for each food category. If a store does not have the required minimum stock on hand during this visit, it will be denied authorization.
Tools that will ensure your success is our WIC partner include an authorized foods list at every full service checkout and the customer service desk, the vendor handbook, the eWIC accepted here sign, and well-trained cashiers, and if desired, the WIC shelf tags. To complete your annual training requirement, you must follow the link in the email you received and complete the quiz and evaluation. Once the quiz and evaluation have been received, your annual training requirement has been fulfilled. If you have any problems accessing the quiz, email terry.buckler at maryland.gov. The Maryland WIC program would like to once again thank you for your participation, dedication, and ongoing support of the WIC program. For additional information, email terry.buckler at maryland.gov.